buzzer fishing. What flies do you need? What rig do you need? And how can you get the most out of this method for still water trout? That's what we're going to be talking about today. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if this is your first time here and you want to learn more, please press the red subscribe button and smash the bell so that you don't miss out on future notifications. Buzzer and nymph fishing. Why do we talk about this method so much? Well, that's because it's the largest food source for trout all year round. From April through to October, you will see the largest prolific hatches across any still water in the UK. So there are three phases which we Need to understand how they work and how we can adapt to fish them. The bloodworm phase, the ascending midge phase and the emerging midge phase. Now during these phases the buzzer will move very very slowly up throughout the water column and throughout the year the colour of the buzzer will change gradually from the darker blacks through to the browns, olives, greens and then even orange. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to solely focus on black buzzers because I think you can get away throughout the whole year just fishing black buzzers. So straight line nymphing is the most commonly used technique to represent buzzers at different points in the spectrum. It offers you the greatest movement and flexibility when fishing buzzers at different depths. The cast would be very simple. You'd be fishing a 15 or an 18 foot leader with two or three flies at five or six foot intervals. And your flight choice can vary, anything from three resin buzzers or two nymphs and a buzzer on the point. So the decision on what team of flies you're going to use is going to be dependent on where you're fishing. So let's say for example it is early spring, it's still cold and the fish are sitting between six and ten foot deep. That for the purpose of this exercise is the taking zone. The nymphs are built in a way that they will fish higher in the water because they will absorb more water based materials that have been used on those flies. Three resin buzzers will sink much faster through the water column and because your aim is to get those flies down as quick as possible from here down to here where that six to ten foot taking zone is you are going to pick three resin or uv buzzers just to pull everything down so that it's sitting where you need it to now what the cast will look like if it's three resin buzzers normally it will be two size 12 black buzzers and one size 10 black buzzer. The reason why we've gone heavy in the end is to anchor everything down so that the cast sits like this in the water column. So the key thing with buzzer fishing, particularly straight line nymphing, is slow. I can't stress this enough. If you think you're fishing slow enough, divide it by four and that is how slow you should be fishing it. Quite often a lack of success with fishing straight line buzzers comes from people just moving the flies far too quickly. And if you think about it, to get to six to 10 feet, it's going to take your flies a minute and a half at least to get down to that taking zone. And any movement you impart on them is only going to keep them out of that six to 10 foot threshold you're trying to maintain with your flies. And let's look at this differently. So let's say for example, it's closer to summer and the fish aren't at six to 10 foot, they're now at two to four foot. If you're going to fish three resin buzzers, after 20 seconds, those buzzers are gonna be below the fish and taking you out of that early taking zone in the top water column. Well, this is a perfect scenario where you would take off the two smaller resin buzzers and replace them with nymphs such as a Diaubach or a Cruncher. And then moving on to cast number two. So let's say for example, this is your first visit to a new fishery. You know that because of the time of year, it's very warm and the fish are going to be feeding on buzzers, but you have no idea about the depth. You have no idea about where the holes are in the lake, where the fish will sit. You are going to switch to the bung. Now the bung will offer you the greatest static control than any method ever will. It's rare that you can suspend three different fly patterns at any depth you want for an infinite amount of time and that's the beauty of the bung and sometimes when you're out on a lake in the middle of summer the fish aren't going to take a moving buzzer they just don't want to see anything wriggling and that is where the bung will just completely outfish everything else so the cast what does the cast look like really simple you're going to fish a 13 foot leader three foot to the bung three foot to the first dropper three foot to the second dropper and then four foot to the point now that's a starting cast. What I'd normally do is, is go out with that on a new venue. I'd fish two small size 12 buzzers and then a size 10 buzzer on the point to anchor everything down again. And if the first two hours I find that the fish have taken the top three foot buzzer or the top six foot buzzer, then I might cut everything away and reduce everything down. So we would go two foot, two foot, two foot. So instead of fishing the top 10 foot of water, 
we're now fishing the top six foot and in essence it should increase my catch rate if that's the case and again with bung fishing i can't stress this enough do not move the cast the minute you've cast the line out let the fly sink for 30 to 40 seconds and then it's a very very slow figure of eight do not move that bung because the minute you move that bung your success rate will drop significantly and it often been the difference between you catching five fish and the person next to you who isn't moving his bung catching 15. Okay and then finally cast number three. So if we look back we've covered off a setup which fishes static at different depths. We've covered a method which covers three different depths with movement and flexibility but let's say for example the taking zone is that three to four foot no more and no less. What would you do then? Well, we've talked about this before. There's one simple answer, the washing line. Now I've done a whole video on this, which you can click on here. So I won't jump into it for this video. And that is it. That is everything you need to know about buzzer fishing for still water trout. Learn these methods, perfect these methods, and you will catch a lot of fish. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.